Hi, I thought the easiest way to talk you through getting a camera screen set up with a Nancy Touch would probably be just to walk you through a uh, basic screen from scratch. Uh, so what I've done here is just created a brand new project with no other screens other than this first one. Uh, I've just done it small size just for the purposes of this demo. Um, I'm going to create three elements on it. Uh, so the first one is a text element. And despite it being a text element, this is actually where the video footage is going to go. Uh, several things I need to do. The first one is to change it from is HTML false to true. And the other one I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete out this text field here. I'll get back to that in a second and name this name field to video, just so it's a little bit easier to remember which button and an object here that I have later on when I'm uh, choosing the element select. Now the key part here is this text field which I've currently had blank. The reason I'm doing that one blank here, at least in this demo, what I'll do is when this page loads I'll have this effectively video screen actually blank and then when you press a button uh, for either the front door camera or perhaps a driveway camera then this video field changes. However if you want to go directly to one of your cameras you can do that by entering in the URL to your camera. So in this case I've just created a, a demo feed, um, full URL port, um, in this case the link that it's through, and I've just created a demo user and password just for the purposes of this video. Um, you'll now see it's go through, but for now as I say I'll keep this field blank. Okay, next what I need to do is add in two buttons. So button number one, and I'll call button number one, uh, let's call this the front door button. And I'll create a second button. We'll call this the driveway. Okay, so now we've got the buttons here, we need to set them so that they change this text element of this object here. So I'll choose in this case when action pressed. I'll go add, and there's an option here for an element of set elements text property. I choose that, and in this case here we've got the two buttons here, and there's the one here which I renamed video. So that's that text element. So I'm selecting that, and in this display text, this is where I put the URL. So in this case, this is the URL or the test URL through to feed number one, which in this case is my front door feed. I have a second one here. I'll do the same thing again. I'll do an add, scroll down, element text property. Again, choose video. And in this case here, I have a separate URL for camera two. So I'll put camera two in there, click OK and done. So at this stage I'm ready to deploy, so I shall click save and load up the client and deploy the project. Okay, so now that that project has loaded, let's see if we can bring it across, there we go. Okay, so as mentioned in this case, because I chose to keep that text field blank for the initial one, there's nothing showing on here, but it should, with any luck, when I click the front door button, now show the front door feed, and I choose driveway, which had now changed to the driveway feed, again, backwards and forwards. So that in short should be enough to get you up and running. Um, as per other comments, one thing to watch out for with HS Touch is around the potential memory leak. I don't know whether they've fixed it on subsequent versions, but I do know that when I left the camera feed running a long time, uh, that it would eventually run out of memory and uh, cause the HS Touch application to fall over. Um, hopefully that has been resolved. That was quite some time ago that, that I had that problem. Um, but nonetheless, what I do is have an event to change that back to a blank, uh, blank page. Uh, after a period of time so it's never stuck on there and that's done me well since then. So hopefully that helps you with the creation of a camera page. Cheers.